and as the election draws closer, there is still concern when it comes to violence, not only toward voters, but to the candidates themselves. We've already seen two assassination attempts our former President Donald Trump and seen reports of hate groups spreading their message ahead of the election. Two News reporter Sartaj Singh joins us live from the newsroom. Sartaj, it seems like we've seen more instances of political violence. Now, where do we go from here? Jack and Kajaja, two political experts that I have talked to have stated that we have not seen this type of levels of political violence since the 60s and 70s. Both parties seem to be diverging when it comes to issues, and that vast difference between ideologies seem to be fueling the violence that we are seeing. This is uh, certainly a, an uptick in political violence, probably the worst we've seen since 1968. In a recent 2023 study from Biomed Central Injury Epidemiology, a survey found that 32.8% of respondents considered violence to be usually and always justified to advance at least one of the 17 specific political objectives, but the violence is reaching the candidates themselves and not just political issues. We've noted uh, and seen two assassination attempts on former President Trump's life but notably, Iran has targeted him, him as well. They put out videos calling for an assassination as well. And with more ways to gather information through social media, the landscape of information has changed, as well as its target audience. But now with social media, there is uh, more instant information, and uh, that can certainly breed a level of aggression. Those who cast their ballot can also find themselves a target of violence, all because of their party affiliation. So we're really seeing a peak that we haven't seen since the 1970s. Jamie Smalls is an associate professor at the University of Dayton and is also a principal investigator for a project funded by Homeland Security to prevent radicalization and violent extremism in southwest Ohio. She says that this type of political violence can have a dire consequence, people giving up their right to vote. If a particular group or individual is targeted by a hostile actor or um, group, that might cause them to refrain from participating in democracy. Small says that the only way to curb and stop political violence is to simply talk. There's actually a lot more common ground than we tend to assume when we look at the big scale political issues. We really believe that we have to kind of set a new narrative. We can't let hate groups win. We can't let folks in Washington set the agenda. And both professors state that making sure you take your information from politi on political topics from trusted sources, as well as being open-minded, can be the key to stopping political violence from getting even worse the more election cycles we enter. Live in the newsroom, Sartaj Singh, 2 News.